So Josh, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh man, the fact that they brought Logan Paul out <laughs> with Cody Rhodes. And it's not even just as Logan Paul, of course. The fact that they're going to literally fight each other <laughs> to win each other's belt. Yes. The King of Ring tournament, which is like, oh, my God. Do I, I don't want to see a undisputed champion and United States champion at the same time at all. <laughs> like, no. And, not, and it's, it's probably even worse, the fact that it's Cody and <laughs> Logan, because, I mean, I already, we already felt like Cody was being, like, a boring champion, and now you're about to maybe give him a United States championship. It's just like... Yes, I would definitely rather Cody gets a United States Championship rather than Logan have two of oh, himself. <laughs> but damn, does does Cody really need a United States Championship too? I guess yeah, he's the Captain America. But damn, like <laughs> Seth Rollins did collect the Infinity Stones. Yeah, Seth Rollins did did double duty when he he beat John Cena the United States Championship because John Stewart interfered in the match. That doesn't that sound funny. Yes, John Stewart, the the political commentator and the, the comedian. Yes. He interfered in the match and hit John Cena with the steel chair. His, his rationale is he didn't want to see John Cena beat Ric Flair's record. <laughs> so, I could, out of the best case scenario out of that match, well, let's go for the build to it and how this came about. Why is Logan Paul the contender, the number one contender for the WWE Championship? I mean, he, he fought Roman Reigns before for the belt, but he wasn't champion yet. But why do you. I don't, from a logistical standpoint, John, I'm just baffled. Why is the contender another champion? It's not It's not like Cody's beating everybody up on the roster. Anymore. Exactly. <laughs> they, they have tons of, they have a plethora of. <laughs> and you go with another champion at Logan Paul. That's what you're telling me. It just, and Logan Paul hasn't even fought it since when? Like, WrestleMania? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a Saudi show. I know that. They're, they're looking for things. They want it to be a popular person i remember when the Saudis when they first started doing the shows over there they were asking wwe to to, to put these ridiculous matches together and and they were throw a lot of money so of course they have some power with that and some of the wrestlers they were asking for were dead they didn't know they were asking for dead wrestlers to be on the show <laughs> and so they they really i say to say they're yeah they want people who, who garner that attention and just big high profile names like they would be totally down for a Hulk Hogan appearance I'm telling you even at his current age a Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair match they'd do it <laughs> it WWE would never clear it but they would you know Ric Flair actually had a heart attack his last match yeah I read that which is insane <laughs> Uh, yeah, I kind of tell you, Rick. <laughs> Maybe you should stop. You ever thought about that? I think he is done for that now. But the point that I was making with the Saudi shows is just, just the uh, visibility and, and the notoriety of certain names. Whether it's a good or bad thing, they just know that it's a very popular area, so that's what they want to see. And that's why they put Logan Paul because who else really has that kind of that gravity over their neck. I mean, I would say he's, he's, he's a well-known person at this point. His popularity, and I use the term loosely, his uh, his recognizability, I'll say that, is why he was chosen for this match. I don't want to say it. I don't understand why Nick Aldis picked him over Randy Orton. Or, I mean, Randy's in the bracket, naturally, but do you understand the amount of depth and storytelling they could have done with a Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes feud. That is going to, maybe because Randy's a, a face and they want that to eventually play out when he's a heel, that would do some, that could be some really captivating work. Like they have a match that Randy turns on him and they have the history from Legacy and Randy Orton is pretty much Cody's mentor. Mm -hmm. And that would be, that's, that's probably one of my most anticipated feuds from Cody Rhodes title reign. They could have ran back the AJ Styles match because it seemed like they had unfinished business there. He beat him decisively, but it was just it was just so competitive, such a good match. But it wasn't it wasn't a match worthy of the oil money. So it's not happening. <laughs> so <laughs> Logan Paul it is. And so let's talk about outcomes here. Absolute worst case scenario of Logan Paul. I don't think there's any question there. Not gonna happen. happen. That, that is with this logo in the middle of the ring, you don't think you don't think it's gonna happen? No. No. If I was a wrestler with a busted nose, I'd purposely bleed on it. But his 
I did see this, this is just because I'm I'm a wrestling nerd and I follow a lot of people who talk about wrestling and things like that. And somebody pitched this that the Wyatt six they interfere in that match and cause it a double disqualification. I'd be satisfied because Cody doesn't want another belt, Logan doesn't want another belt, and they just go to separate ways. Somebody needs to interfere. Or imagine this, Josh. I know because Brock Lesnar has been quiet. I, mean, I think they started posting more more footage of Brock Lesnar back on WWE's YouTube channel. So he's kind of like went away when the when the lawsuit came. But he was alluded to being a part of that, and that's why he didn't fight Dominic Mysterio. That's why he didn't fight Gunther at WrestleMania. And yeah, I mean, who's to say? Like this is a Saudi shirt, Josh. Saudi money. Who's to say that? They don't have Brock Lesnar come out there and crash the match, and that'd be Cody's next feud. I mean, it, it kind of would walk back Brock's progress a little bit because they had the, the show of respect. And, but they've done sillier things. We, we, we have a show called Two Smart Marks, and we talk about the good and the silly things that they do on a weekly basis, Josh. So I say that to say there's no shortage of, of silly things that they can do or have done in the past. And... I'm just looking for the silver lining here. Something, somebody has to interfere in this match. That's just the reality. No, there can't be a decisive winner. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But yeah, definitely the worst case scenario is definitely Logan Paul winning this match. Cause don't want to see that. And even if Cody Rhodes win the match, he's just like, uh, you got two champions now. What what would happen? Like, what's gonna happen? Like, when he defends the title, is he always gonna defend it? Nothing, nothing good comes out of this here because yeah, if he wins both of those belts, he has to defend both. And I can imagine that yeah. he he is going to if he loses the United States Championship by pinfall, then that makes him look weaker as a champion with his other title. And then it raises the question, well, if this person beat him for that title, <laughs> why should they fight for this? And then you get into this thing where in a, in a storyline continuity for something making cohesive sense, you could potentially have double champions over and over again. Because if I beat you once for this belt, why can't I take the other one? I'm double champion. And then somebody else fights me for one of my belts. Well, they beat me for it. You know, it's, it's the thing. Just if you have two championships, keep the championships separate. Yeah crazy so yeah it was definitely disappointing i don't know if it was more disappointing because it was the two championships or the fact that it was just logan paul and it was like they, wait you choose him like the really? ultimate stinker yeah it was just like oh my god it wasn't man. maybe logan paul would be just so annoying that maybe it'll give cody a boost as champion and maybe we even like him more or something I was thinking, okay, maybe that will happen. Like, maybe Logan Paul would just be so annoying during this. Like, we like Cody. All right, kick his ass. <laughs> I didn't think about like, so I don't know, but it was just so disappointing. The fact, like, oh, Logan Paul. Oh, because I was like, I think I threatened out before when Cody came out. I was like, man, I hope this promo leads to something, and then it leads to Logan Paul coming. I was like, oh damn. You should have been more specific when you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was just it was disappointing. I did go back and when I was when I was watching it, they had an exchange and part of I, I part of I'm gonna keep this this is a wrestling talk center. But the discussion that I wanna have here is what Logan Paul said specifically about when you, oh yeah, you won the Royal Rumble, but people were talking about the viral moment that I had with Dubuchet colliding in the ring. And gosh, I forgot that happened. I have it, might, it might have went viral because it was he. It went viral. He was very specific. He did say that day what was trending. Okay, sure. I'll give you that. But in terms of the longevity, Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble was the only way people remember the Rumble. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, that's that's the only thing that mattered, and that's. Part of my problem with Logan Paul, his his character is rooted in his reality. Like he, mm -hmm. his character, who you see on the screen, I have a strong belief that that is who he is. And the things he said, that's why he's so effective in getting you to not like him because he's himself. Not, he's not acting. <laughs> <laughs> he's not acting. <laughs> he's not. Acting. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just with with that being the case, him saying like, things that are garnered on the basis of 
or excuse me, on the basis of garnering attention or likes and clicks and things like that. And it's, I, I, I don't. Did you like him saying he was the latest, uh, longest reigning uh, champion in WWE at this time? He's the longest reigning champion? Yeah. He's had I mean, it's, it's true. But, I mean, the people, like, I take those things with a grain of salt. Specifically, the champions that tout that, the vast majority of them have very few title defenses. That too, yeah. So when you say you're the longest reigning person that does X or has the X championship or whatever the case was, when we look at your title defenses. He's had, what, two since he's been champion? Correct. When did he become champion? What was that? Last summer. Slam. That wasn't, was it, no, it wasn't Elimination Chamber before that. Beat Rey Mysterio. Yeah, I forgot what that event that was, though. I want to say SummerSlam. SummerSlam? Oh, okay. I want to, say. Well, my point is, that's like saying you get on a fight on a playground as a child, and the other the other guy slips and falls and I guess hits his head and knocks himself out or something like that. And then you're 30 years old, you never had another fight before, and it's like, oh, I'm undefeated. <laughs> My hands are are registered. <laughs> like, dude, you only won that fight because the other dude knocked himself out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was that was probably the most disappointing thing about SmackDown overall. Um, on Friday, I would, say, I would respect it a lot more. Yeah, and obviously, he's a heel, he's supposed to say things that irritate you. It's irritating, but if it was somebody like Seth Rollins to say that, Seth Rollins defended his championship, I don't know how many times that he's had on house shows, too. So, you could, he could make a claim like that. I've been, I'm the longest reigning champion, but he's not now. But yeah, that's it. It's just, it's just a, to me, it's a cheap heel antic. Yeah. yeah. 